In this practice exercise, we're going to be going over self-check 4.1 logical tests. So we want to translate each of the following English statements into logical statements that could be used in an if-else statement. We want to write the appropriate logical test for each of our statements, and we're going to assume three int variables have been already declared. We want to check, remember this is for an if-else statement, so imagine if we have like if and this condition is in that if. So if we were to code this out, it'd be something like if, and then our statement, which is what our answer has to be inside of these boxes, will be. So z is odd. Well, how do we check if z is odd? Well, we see if z is odd if we set our z modulus 2 equal to 1. And what this means is that we're going to take our z, we're going to divide it by 2. Now, the modulus means that we're going to actually get the remainder from this. So the remainder, if we pass in a 2, is going to be 0, right? 2 divided by 2, there is no remainder, so this is 0. So that would be in our else. Now, for our z being odd, we want our z modulus 2 to be equal to 1. Because if we pass in an odd number, like let's say 9, 9 modulus 2 is going to give us a remainder of 1. So that's how we would check this one. Next we have z is not greater than y's square root. Well, we can use a comparison operator for this. So z, just by itself, is not greater than, if it's not greater than, well that means it has to be less than or equal to, right? So we have our less than or equal to sign, and then this is our y's square root. So we have to do our math dot square root and pass in a y inside of here. We have to check if y is positive. This is a simple y greater than zero. For d, we either have x or y is even and the other is odd. And we don't want to use these ands or ors here. So how do we do this? Well, remember, even and odd. How do we check this? Well, z is odd, y is positive. It's kind of the same thing. So x is even, meaning that x modulus 2 cannot equal to a 1, right? If it's even, if, if either of them is even, x or y, we'll just use x as an example for now. If x, we'll say, is even, then it's not going to have a remainder, so this should be 0. Well, y should have a remainder if it's odd, right? Because the other is odd. So if x is even, y has to be odd. So it means it has to have a remainder. Remainder is 1. 0 cannot equal to 1. So if that is true for this, that means we have x or y is even and the other as odd. y is a multiple of z. Well, to check if something is a multiple of something, remember, this is if we have, like, 2 is equal to 4 in this case, because 4 is a multiple of 2. So if we modulus them together, we can check if it is a multiple to see if their remainder is 0. 9 is a multiple of 3. If we take 3 and divide it by 9, we won't have a remainder. This will be 0. That's going to be it for that. Now, z is not 0. z is not 0 by this logic. Super simple. Next, we have y is greater in magnitude than z. So that means y has to be just bigger than z. Now, I believe the magnitude means that it's kind of not directional, I believe. I think vector is directional. So we're just going to use absolute values and compare our y to z. Now, if this is not the case, we'd be just still compare y to z. Just make sure that y is greater than z. So this is post video, and my h realized it's not correct, even though practice it said it was. So it guarantees a 12 out of 12, but it's not really a 12 out of 12 because this doesn't work. So we have to see if x and y are opposite signs. Well, how do we do that? Well, if they're opposite signs, if we multiply them together, it's going to be a negative number, right? Because whenever we multiply a positive by a negative, it's a negative number. If we have two positives, it's going to be a positive. If it's a negative and a negative, it's going to make a positive. So we just have to make sure our value is a negative. So it has to be less than zero. So if we multiply our x by the z, it should be less than zero for this to be of opposing signs. And it's 12 out of 12. So just keep this in mind when we go through the rest of the video. Um, the one I have in the rest of the video is not correct. Fix this after the video. We'll come back to this one. Y is a non-negative one digit number. Well, if it's one digit, it has to be less than 10. And since it's positive, it's non-negative, it has to be greater than or equal to zero. 
z is not negative, z just has to be greater than or equal to zero, or z is greater than negative one. Um, we have x is even, so we're just going to check if it's even by doing the modulus, checking to see if it doesn't have a remainder. Remember, only positive numbers have no remainders. Then we have x is closer in value to y than z is. So let's check this. This is for sure absolute value because we're just checking the distance. So we have math.absolute, x is closer in value to y, x minus y, so y to z, we're just going to subtract these here. And we just want to compare this, and if this side is smaller, x to y, that means it's a smaller um, value, smaller distance, so x is closer to y than our z is. So let's submit, we're going to get 12 out of 12 tests passed.